You may have heard that in the state of Florida, our Governor Ron DeSantis do not want CTR, critical race theory, to be taught in the schools and that he does not want black history to be taught in school. I did a video um, about that a while back and I will post it somewhere on this video. You may have also heard that the state of Florida is very racist. Before I get into all of that, I want to kind of give you some perspective. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in April of 1968 during the Civil Rights Movement. And the Civil Rights Movement was um, done to, because, you know, as black people and during that time, it was separate but equal. Black people could only go to restaurants that was deemed black restaurants. They can only drink out of um, black-only water fountains. They can only use black-only bathrooms. They can only sleep in hotels for black people. And so with the Civil Rights Movement, it was to get that abolished, making it possible for black people to go wherever they want to go, eat wherever they want to eat. And like I said, Martin Luther King was assassinated in April of 1968. I was born in 1969. So that means I have three older brothers. My three older brothers was born during the time of separate but equal. My parents lived through and was born through, during the time of separate but equal grandparents, so forth and so on. So it's not like it's a long time ago that all of this took place. So to say that the state of Florida is racist, of course it is. Just like I'm here, my, my mother and father talked to me about how they grew up. I, I told on one video about my mom growing up and how she drunk out of she was downtown with her father and she looked around and she drank out of the white only water fountain to see if their water tasted better because she felt that because they couldn't drink out of it being black that the white water fountain, the water was taste better or be cooler only to find out that it tasted just the same as the water out of the black only water fountain. My grandmother, which is my father's mother, the only grandparent that I met, she was a maid. She used to have to be on her hands and knees scrubbing their floor. She would have a bucket of water, of soapy water, and a scrub brush and be on her hands and knees scrubbing the floors. Like I said, this is my grandmother, my father's mother. And I, I was lucky enough to be able to meet her, to be able to talk to her and, and hear different things, the stories of how she grew up. I was, um, you know, had with my father how he was you know being a situation where he was disrespected he wasn't called the n-word but he was called boy and things like that i was never taught to hate anyone but these are the things that i was told as a child growing up so if i'm still here and this is my parents History, like I said, my, my brothers, even though it did not affect them in that way because they was young, but they was born under that umbrella of separate but equal. What about the people on the other side? Where do you think they went? Do you think they just all disappeared from the state of Florida? The ones that was protesting and wanted to keep everything separate but equal. The ones that, that you know, would, would yell, curse, spit, use the N-words and all that. I grew up seeing Confederate flags waving from buildings. I grew up seeing Confederate flags on the back of pickup trucks, on people wearing it and proudly walking around displaying their Confederate flags on their t-shirts, hats, you know, be the husband, wife, and their kids, and, and things like that. They would have the, the tags on the front of their trucks with the Confederate flag. 
the middle school, um, y'all call it middle school, but we call it junior high. Our junior high school was from sixth grade to um, ninth grade. The school I went to was Robert E. Lee Junior High School. Robert E. Lee was the so was you know was a Confederate soldier. So the what we seen as far as the, um, the I'm sorry the school mascot was a cartoon version of Robert E. Lee in his Confederate outfit with a Confederate hat on. This is in the state of Florida. So if I'm hearing the history from my people as far as what happened, what do you think those people told their kids? So why would you not think the state of Florida is racist? Why would you not think the United States is, is not racist? Why would you think the world is not racist? So it is, but is that my problem? Is that as black people, is that our problems? No, I have said before, my Christianity comes first and then I'm black. There are good and evil throughout the world. That's my Christianity. But at the same time, I am aware of racism. Racism isn't gonna stop me. Racism is not my focus. God said, keep his, your focus on him. Even though his people, when you read the Bible, you hear about the um, Israelites, and you see that they was always surrounded by their enemies, he always said, do not be afraid. Keep your, keep your eyes on him. When Peter got out the boat, Jesus told Peter, if you would have kept your eye out, well, he didn't tell him exactly like that, but if he would have kept his focus on him instead of worrying about what's going on around him, he would have continued to walk on the water. When Jesus sent out his disciples and he said, whoever do not accept you, he didn't tell them to get mad. He said, take your peace with you. Shake off the dust and take your peace with you. And so that's how I feel that as black people, we need to live our lives. Stop focusing on racism. Does it exist? Absolutely, positively, yes. Do people hate you because of your skin color? Absolutely, positively, yes. Is that your problem? Absolutely, positively, no. That is not my problem or our problem as black people. Yes, we should be aware of what's going on around us. Yes, we should be aware of our surroundings. Yes, we should be aware of things that are happening that can affect us. But should that stop us from moving? Should that hold us back? Should that be the forefront of our minds that we, we're stuck because we're too afraid to do something at the box? We're too afraid to move forward. We're too afraid looking for this person or that person. My grandmother, my father and mother told me this. She said, there's good white people in the world, there's bad white people in the world. She says, the only difference is they all look the same. And you, so you, so why should I be worried about, is this a good white person? Is that, I'm going to treat everybody the way I want to be treated until you show me something different. If you show me something different, then I'm going to respond to it that way saying, well, I don't need to deal with that person no more. That's, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fuss with you. I'm not going to say, well, I don't understand why you don't like black people. I don't understand why you're a racist. I, that's not my problem. Shake the dust off me, take my peace with me, and move on. And that's the mindset that we need to have as black people. Stop fussing, stop fighting over people that you cannot change. If a racist person is a racist person, they're going to continue to be a racist person. No matter what you do, no matter what you show them, no matter what. That's how they're going to be. Let them be that way. That's not your problem. Your problem is to keep moving forward. Your problem is if you're in a school and something is not being taught the way it should be taught, then that is something that needs to be dealt with on that level. But don't make it as, oh, because I'm black this or I'm black that. Because when you keep doing that, you keep, like they say, you keep beating a dead dog. Find a way around it. Find a way over it. Find a way through it. And just keep moving forward. So as far as in Florida um, with the critical race theory, the critical race theory, from my understanding of what it is, 
It's saying that white people are inherently evil and black people cannot get ahead in life because of all these systematic system that is set up because of race. If that's what you're teaching in school, then that's what you're putting in these students' mind. You're putting that in the white student mind, but you're also putting that in the black student mind. So should that be taught in school? No. Teach people that if you want to achieve this, you can. If you want to achieve that, you can. If you're if you're setting them up setting them up for failure by saying there's a barrier there. If you're setting them up for failure by saying, oh, you can't get ahead in life because this is going to stop you, that is going to stop you, guess what? They're going to buy into that. That is a lie. They can be of whatever they want to be. They can achieve whatever they want to achieve, regardless of what's put in place to block them. Find a way over it. Find a way around it. Find a way through it. Find whatever then that's why you do get the education so you can be a lawmaker and change laws that's going to prohibit you from moving forward. That's why you go um, get jobs in hospitals because if they're not doing things right as far as making sure black women, you know, because there, there's issue with black women and, and, and the, the death rate of their kids, that's why you become a doctor. That's why you become, you know, uh, in this position or that position to fight against that. That's how you fight against it. You don't fight against it by saying, okay, let's go get a sign and march. That solves nothing. Fighting against this has been in place. So when something foul is happening, you can speak up against it. Being in, being, you fight against it by being there. So then you can say, okay, that law is not just. What you're doing is not just. What you're doing is not righteous. So I'm not going to go along with that. I'm not going to vote for that. All we have is truth and honesty. We cannot add to the truth. We cannot take away from the truth. Just like God said about the Bible, don't add to it. Don't take away from it. It's, it's done work. It's finished. And that's how history is. History and CRT are two separate things. CRT is more how they're teaching it. It's more about indoctrinating. It's more about putting your mindset in a position where you cannot move forward because of this. And then also if you t tell a person that you're bad, you're bad, you're bad, then they're going to start acting bad. So if they're teaching white people that because you're white, you're bad, they're going to start acting bad. If they're teaching black kids that you can't move forward because you're black, then guess what? Why should I try hard? Because there's things in place that's going to stop me. So when you're teaching history, History is facts. You cannot have black history without white history. Black history and white history is American history. So you cannot teach white history and exclude black history. You cannot teach black history and excuse, excuse, exclude white history. They go hand in hand. It's American history. American history should be taught truthfully with facts. And if people feeling get hurt, that's people feeling because if you're teaching truth, because the school, going to school is about being educated honestly. If you're teaching and there's no bias, if you're a white teacher, there's no bias because you're white. If you're a black teacher, there's no bias because you're black. You're teaching. You're educating. And so you should not stop that information because if you stop what they always say, if, if, uh, if you don't learn history, there's a, a chance that you're going to repeat it again. So you can't withhold that information. And then if you're seeing it being withheld, and I'm not talking about all this other stuff that people like to add to it and this, this, and just make it seem like it's worse than it really is. Be truthful, be honest, and be factual. And that's how history should be taught. Everybody is not going to be happy with hearing the truth. That's just the way life is. Regardless of what color you are, some people get offended by the truth. Some people's feelings get hurt by the truth. Some people get mad over the truth. But as long as you're teaching facts and teaching truth, history, our history, American history, should be taught in school. 
Nothing should be excluded. Nothing should be left out. Nothing should be whitewashed. Nothing should, none of that should exist when you're teaching facts. When you have documentation, when you're following the timeline of history, this happened because of that happening, because of this happening. This is what happened. Just like if you were talking about the Boston Tea Party, you're not going to change things around, leave stuff out. You're going to tell everything about what happened with the Boston Tea Party. If you're teaching and you happen to be teaching on slavery, everything that happened in slavery should be taught. No, there was no jolly jolly, this is, oh, we're so happy to be slaves. These people was kidnapped from their country, brought over here, and forced labor, rape, beat, and, and all this other stuff. You know, kids taken away from their parents and, and, and people hung. And that's history. That's, that's history. As long as you're teaching facts, as long as you're teaching it with, with truth and with honesty, there should be no problem teaching that in school. Like I said, history and CRT are two separate things. History needs to be taught in school. CRT is a different, is a different beast that people are kind of dumping everything in. Everything go, go, goes, you know, like the, the, it's just CRT, the way it's been taught is more about indoctrination than education. And that's why I have a problem with that. Once again, I'm a Christian first. There's evil all throughout the world, regardless of race, creed, or color. I'm black, and I understand racism. I was born in the South. I grew up in the South. Like I said, I was born in 1968. I'm sorry, 1969. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in 1968. So it's not like I'm far removed from what happened with the civil rights movement. Like I said, I grew up in the South. I heard things from my parents, my grandmother, and I also experienced things as my, my, on my own, growing up in the South, seeing things, you know, on, you, go, you go downtown to the Capitol buildings, you know, in front of um, certain buildings, you would see flags, Confederate flags waving on federal buildings. That's the life I live, that, that's history. And that's the history of the state of Florida. So do I, am I naive to think, oh, Florida's not racist? That racist people don't live in the state of Florida? <laughs> no, I'm not, because it, it is what it is. And that's basically all, all, I, all I want to say. Oh, and I will leave um, information in the um, description box. Peace.